Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Let's talk about the Super Bowl, some post-game thoughts. You know, when Seattle was favored by one and a half points, I actually made a video and posted it on my pay channel here on YouTube, Dwyer Sports Betting, where I recommended to subscribers that they take the Seahawks. Right? I thought you were getting compelling value with Seattle getting a point and a half. Now understand so many people, just in general, not because of my video, just independently, at the last minute thought Seattle was going to win. Right? That the late money came in on Seattle to the point where Seattle went off at game time as a one-point favorite. Right? In other words, gamblers respected Seattle, especially wise guys. Now, the last drive, the last offensive play of Seattle's year, you know what? I have no problem with it, even though it cost me the bet. I have no problem with it. Because the same gambling part of Pete Carroll that had him go with then rookie Russell Wilson as his starting quarterback, right? Five foot eleven inch Russell Wilson, right? The same part of Pete Carroll that gambled throughout this game and had wide receiver Chris Matthews who had barely been used by Seattle before, right, barely, right, who hadn't even caught passes in the postseason, this postseason, right, the same part of Pete Carroll that had Chris Matthews catching four passes for 109 yards. In other words, the same gambling part of Pete Carroll that got Seattle into the game and that got Seattle a 10-point lead in the third quarter. Keep in mind, folks, they're leading the game by 10 at the end of the third quarter with statistically the best defense in football left to protect that lead for the fourth quarter. That same Pete Carroll on that last drive with less than 30 seconds left with a running back who had rushed for over 100 yards in the game who was averaging over 4 yards a carry and who had the run that got you to the 1 yard line. That same Pete Carroll decided just like he had with Chris Matthews earlier to pursue an element of surprise. Right? Rather than run Marshawn Lynch like 99% of the people in the stadium thought he would, he decided instead to run Ricardo Lockett on a quick slant inside to catch the Patriots unprepared. Right? The problem, <clears throat> the problem was the opposing coach was Bill Belichick. And Belichick was ready I congratulate the Patriots on winning the game. I don't want that last play to overshadow the great football we saw throughout that game. I don't want that last play to overshadow the great coaching we saw throughout the game by both coaches. The risk taking we saw throughout the game by both coaches. Understand you know, you're looking at a Seattle team that played so well that even with that last interception, Russell Wilson had a higher quarterback rating than Tom Brady in the game. Understand that last play, Pete Carroll decided to go with his quarterback who had a greater than 100 quarterback rating for the game. Right? on a quick slant. He didn't realize that Belichick would be prepared to knock Ricardo Lockett, who was supposed to catch that pass, off the route. 
right? This was chess at the highest level. Let me talk about the Patriots. How do you come back from 10 down at the end of the third quarter in the biggest game of the year against the Seattle Seahawk Legion of Boom secondary? How do you throw the ball 50, think about it, 50 times against the Legion of Boom with an immobile quarterback and only have him get sacked once? How does Tom Brady complete 64% of his passes against a defense that just held Andrew Luck to only seven points? Right? If you look at the box score and look at the stats of the players, this is really an eye opening performance. Right? Julian Edelman. <clears throat> Nine catches, 109 receiving yards. Don't forget about him as you look at this Super Bowl, right? Don't get blinded by the last play. Look at the plays before that. Julian Edelman, nine catches, 109 yards. Shane Vereen, a running back, 11 catches. Are you kidding me? 11 catches for Shane Vereen? Look at Brady's ball distribution, right? Edelman, nine catches. Vereen, 11 catches. Rob Gronkowski, six catches. Danny Amendola, five catches. Brandon LaFell, four catches. I'm telling you, if you or I had a New England jersey on, Tom Brady would have found a way to get us to football. The ball distribution is astonishing. Right. Look at Marshawn Lynch. Sadly, all anyone's going to remember about Marshawn Lynch for this game is that he didn't get that last carry. Right? Instead, they tried to pass it in and got picked. But understand, Marshawn Lynch was averaging more than four yards a carry, folks. Marshawn Lynch ended the game with more than 100 rushing yards. Marshawn Lynch even had a nifty catch for 31 yards. So really, the big winners here. Besides the team that won the game, the now champion New England Patriots, and they deserve an applause on a great game. But the big winners really are the NFL itself. Preliminary reports indicate that this game will have been the most watched game in NFL history. Let's just say I was struck by how good John Legend was. I was struck by how good the national anthem was. The woman who sang that, 10 out of 10. Phenomenal performance. I was struck by how good Katy Perry was in the halftime show with Missy Elliott, with Lenny Kravitz. They put on a great halftime show. And then to have this game, one of the better games I've seen, come down to the last drive in a play that takes place with less than one yard to go and to have both coaches making bold moves I mean bold this game was an eye-opener if you think the NFL is big now you haven't seen nothing yet next year it's gonna be off the page the NFL somehow lucked into having one of its best games take place during its most watched game. Right? Let me say this too. Right? I thought Tom Brady was going to have problems. My prop bet hit. Tom Brady ended up with less than 351 passing yards. That was a great prop. Um, you know, you could have taken Brady from 250 to 350 and gotten a plus 250 and higher on both sides of the play. So that play worked out for me. But I have to tell you, even being on the right side of that play, I was watching Tom Brady in the fourth quarter, <coughs> and I was nervous. The guy was money. 
right? Here he is against the top-rated defense. You couldn't have figured that one out, right? Seattle was on its heels. Brady was making throws. They didn't know where he was going to go with the football. And, of course, Brady with the entire season on the line, with a 10-point deficit, a hole to climb out of, was accurate with the football. Right? This is a game I'll remember a long time. I don't fault Pete Carroll's risk-taking. Let me say, in closing, you understand why Seattle will be back. Just by reading the post-game interviews of Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. Right? You understand that there are few things in life more powerful than personality. Independently of each other. Pete Carroll gave an interview where he said, I call the play. I told them to pass the football. It's on me. Russell Wilson, not knowing what Pete said, gave an interview where he said, I threw the pass. The play's on me. You have guys who are willing to take risks, and you have guys who are willing to be accountable after taking risks. You have great character and great leadership in Seattle. As long as Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson are together, that team is going to be just fine. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. I understand some people are going to be hot under the collar today. No doubt about it. I understand the sense of loss in Seahawk Nation is great. Hey, I had the Seahawks in the game. I, I understand 100%. Right? Um, I hope you leave your comments for all of us here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.